Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, from your favorite real estate website, thelandgeek.com, and I've got a special treat. I hope you're sitting down. If you're standing up, sit down. This is big because after I don't know how many weeks of begging, pleading, getting on my knees, sending gifts to the man, the myth, the real estate legend in Carlsbad, California, living the dream off the beach, I'm pleased to announce for the next 30 minutes, I have Jaren Frazier! What? You just screamed so loud, Mark, that I think you broke your microphone. Thank you. That was a cool cool uh, little thing you got there. Uh, Jaren, what's up, buddy? That would have been a really cool intro if I was a boxer or something like that. But since I'm just a, a, a puny little land guy that does some mining stuff, it's pretty pathetic. Yeah, uh, let's, let's talk about that mining stuff. You were just away in Vancouver. It couldn't podcast with me. Um, how was that trip? I know you don't. By the way, he can't talk about it, but let's talk about it. Oh, stop it. Stop it. Yeah, you know what? I can talk a little bit about it. Um, went to a trade show with a number of different mining companies, primarily public companies. It was very interesting because the dynamic of, of, of private and public companies, there's just a very unique uh, dynamic there. So um, learned a lot uh, about mining and about how to put these deals together and structure uh, but not being a miner is very interesting. And so for me, I look, you know, just being there around these people, talking to people, asking questions, and then many people coming up to our booth. We had this gorgeous trade show booth that, uh, that I'm going to pat myself on the back for that I put together myself. I thought it was one of the better ones in the room. And we were one of the only private companies in the room. So it was neat, but uh, it went really well, made some really good connections for our company moving forward. Uh, some potential offers on the table, which is really exciting, and uh, springboards us into a uh, Toronto trip coming up here in a few weeks. Nice. So, how does that work? You've got property. To just kind of remind everybody about your deal and uh, and how it all works because it's pretty interesting. All right. So, I'm obviously I'm a land guy. Uh, I acquired land. This is actually a project that I asked Mark to invest in, and I, you know I think Mark. I mean, who knows? I don't know if Mark will ever kick himself, but um, he may. And uh, and then he may just laugh at me and go, ha, 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 I'm so glad I didn't. You know, you know what it is, though? It's just not – it's too risky for me. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very risky that, – that, that part, the risk part, I think, has sort of been mitigated now, which is great. So um, I've, been in a, I've been in a risk mode for about two years now with the project. But long story short, we had a bunch of land, and uh, a couple of people came up to us with some mineral rights that kind of were in between our parcels and very excited about getting involved in a project. We didn't really pay attention to our neighbor, but our neighbor started finding these veins that were very high grade gold. So it sort of, it sort of defined our project without having to really put a hole in the ground. These guys had a few hundred holes in the ground, I think. And, and they were, and over the last year and a half, they've raised about 140 million. Wow. And so, for, again, it, it's one of those things where you just let your neighbor do, do the hard work. And for us, we've sort of been doing a ton of, you know, ge geological, geophysics research and putting reports together. And it, it looks very promising. And so we've just kind of as a team, as a group, uh, we all have our <clears> – <throat> we kind of have, uh, you know, our focuses to kind of help with this project. And, and so we're at a place now where it's put together. We're sort of right – we're right before our drilling stage, which is called uh, our exploration program. And right, uh, right. and so it's, you know, it, it looks very interesting. So I'll just put, I'll just leave it there. Okay. So we're not going to jinx it. Can I just, can I tell everybody what you're probably going to make on it? No, 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 dude. Cause you know what? Cause then people are going to start knocking on my door and I'm not going to know where they came from. <laughs> All right. And, okay. I'll just, I'll just say that. No, let's, no, let's, no, no, let's just say we don't know what's going to happen, but, but I, I can I can comfortably say um, we believe it's a very valuable project. Um, when you're when you're next to a project that has has some of the highest grades in the world, you can imagine that number one, we don't know because we still have a strategy. I don't know if we're going to make anything, but what I do know is that we have the opportunity to do a number of different 
structured within the deal. So meaning do we partner with another mining company to go in and drill? Do we sort of manage, you know, who, what executives we bring in um, to, to make, make that, uh, make that plan happen. So there's a lot of variables involved. We don't exactly know what direction. So put it this way, I can take a lot more risk and reap a much higher reward. Or I can I can say, hey, you know what? As a as a group, we're all out, and thank you. Wash your hands of it and walk away, and still do well. So right. it's just, you you have to decide what what how, you know as a group collectively what what the best decision is for the company. Right, right. But can I just tell? No, shut up, Mark. All right, I won't say anything. I'm not going to jinx you. Anyways, I, let's just put it this way: um, if you need a deal funded, you can go to Duran. Not if yet. This, if this deal goes through. <laughs> if the deal goes through. I'll, yeah. And look, I'm not opposed to letting people know when we close a deal, but here's the great news about this whole situation is because if we talk about land, this started off buying and selling land, and I just sort of sat on some property I thought had some value. And I'll be honest with you. I think as we sort of move into uh, sort of that economic instability, uh, and you know, people say, oh, well, you know, I, I believe the country's doing fine. Well, if you do, you and I can argue later. But um, – I just think that there's going to be a lot of things that happen with the commodities market. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of value in minerals and a lot of people don't realize what kind of value is there. So it's just neat to have something. Um, There's a, there's a, there's a project in Nevada. uh, It's a big oil uh, project that has to do with fracking. And, and I think Nevada is allowing them to start drilling. And I actually have land within their, within their group of lands that I'm thinking about just keeping because I have mineral rights to it. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. In fact, I'm, I met a guy at uh, my tax lien investing conference this weekend that he buys property on the East Coast and then he sells the oil and gas rights off it for income. Uh, I'm going to have him on the podcast. It's a really interesting strategy. But um, so it's kind of similar, right? Or no? Yes, uh, and, and again, oil, oil and mining, although extremely different. Um, there are a lot of similarities right? and and it comes down, I mean, you know, there are different types of geologists and geology and everything else that you do. But, um, so yeah, I think, I think that, uh, when people start opening their eyes to what the potential is, whether it's natural gas, I mean, I, I was introduced to a guy in Wyoming who happened to be, uh, I think he's probably one of the wealthiest guys in Wyoming, but just an amazing guy, um, found a well called Jonah field. Um, I think it was an 11 trillion, uh, what is it? Um, my gosh, 11 trillion gallon, uh, natural gas well or something to that effect. I don't know exactly, but it was, it was massive. Um, really cool find. I mean, you know, I think he became a close to a billionaire overnight on that, on that natural gas well. And it was just, I think uh, from what I recall and what some, what I, what I was told is that, you know, some of the geologists were like, just let's another thousand feet. Let's just go a thousand feet deeper. Right. And the other, the other, the other guys pulled out. So um, so we had to go raise some more capital to make do the final drill hole uh, that extra thousand feet. So, all right, great. Oh, uh, I think it, I think it's called 11, 000, 11 million cubic cubic feet of. I, and again, I don't know. I don't want to. I don't think it's gallons. It's eleven thousand cubic feet. But but uh, so anyway, it was just really interesting to talk to someone that that had had found something that had so much value, and yet he could have literally walked away from it because he didn't want to drill a thousand feet deeper. Right. Right. So. Um- Looking at the calendar, speaking of conferences, we're going to have our first uh, Land Geek conference, two-day intensive seminar. Duran is going to be there, correct? Uh, well, if you, you got to give me a date first. 20, 22nd and 23rd, I think. Uh, Let me just double check. Of uh, what month? In Vegas. Vegas, oh. baby, Vegas. March. Oh, Ma- March? Yeah, March 22nd, 23rd. So put, be, it, put it on your calendar I'll be, now. I'll be in Hong Kong, dude. I'm sorry. You will not. There's an off grid. There's an off grid conference in, in Hong Kong. Yeah, you'll skip that one. <laughs> all right. So Duran's going to be there. I'm going to be there, um, and we're going to talk about all things land investing, mindset sessions. It's going to be awesome. And the next two months, we're really going to work on this thing, and uh, and go from there. But uh, Duran, have you ever have you ever done any public speaking like that? Mm, you know, I have talked in front of several people, but I would say. Um, yeah, I don't, you know, I don't know if I've actually got up um, and, you know, let's just say, no, I haven't. So you guys can all forgive me when I'm, when I'm terrible. You're going to be great. You're going to be great. And I, and you know, it's funny because I went to uh, the tax lien investing conference in McCungy, Pennsylvania, and Joanne didn't want me to say this, but like, I've never done 
public speaking before, right? So I go out there with my laptop, my keynote address, and put the mic on. And, you know, my, my heart's beating a mile a minute. Take a deep breath. And the first thing I do is I go, and, you know, the crowd's already listened to a couple, you know, there's probably 40, 50 people in the room. And the crowd's already listened to a bunch of different uh, speakers speak. And uh, so I go up there, and I'm nervous, and I go, sweet Caroline. And everybody goes, bum, bum, bum. So that's how I started. And then uh, I, I told my – I told a story, and I told them what I was going to tell them. And I think it went really well for my first time. Um, you, can, you know, you get over it. You get over the nerves. But, uh, you know, the reason I'm, I'm talking about that, and I think that the listeners can get something out of that is in the sense that, you know, it feels great to kind of go outside your comfort zone as long as you're prepared, right? Like, I know the material. I know how to buy and sell raw land and teach people. Yeah. To go up there and talk about it is, you know, a little different. Yeah. But not crazy. Yeah. So just the idea of public speaking and going outside of my comfort zone, yeah, it was uncomfortable, but now I've did I've done it and it feels great. Yeah. No, I think I think you're right. I think for me, knowing what I know about land, I mean we've been in this business for so long, Mark, it's hard to get up there and really blow it. Right. Uh, you know, I you know, just these podcasts have taught me how to sort of as you as you as you talk, you sort of think before you say certain things so that you don't say um. <laughs> say, um, then the, another um follows an um uh, and then you start sort of repeating yourself so i to be honest with you i've learned a lot by just podcasting with you because i really focus on what my conversation is going to be what i'm going to talk about so that i don't stall in the conversation and say um well but i will say for a fact that i'm going to say um about 800 times in vegas you're gonna be fine you're gonna be fine so all right put it on your calendars now it's because it's only you know it's, what, it's only january right yeah. So, um, and I think yeah, you'll be, you'll, yeah, you'll, you'll be, you'll be listening to this podcast January 30th. It's going to come out. So put it on your calendar now, uh, March 22nd, 23rd, Vegas, baby, Vegas. Uh, I think we're going to be at the Westin, um, not on the strip so that everybody can still focus on learning, but, um, off the strip so that at night it's still fun. So it's going to be great. So March 22nd, 23rd, put it on your calendars. Duran and I will be in Vegas. All right, so uh, Vancouver was good for you. I had a good trip to uh, yeah, tell Mark, Philadelphia. Tell me about, you, you went on a couple of trips back to back, which is uh, yeah. I, I went to Austin. I met Paul Harmon. He'll probably be on the podcast. Um, he's a busy guy. He's a private equity guy, and you know he he does alternative investments for accredited investors. Accredited investor is somebody that makes over two hundred fifty thousand a year and has a million dollar net worth. So. Um, he was interested in uh, giving his members uh, or, or in, in introducing to his members my investors toolkit as another strategy for them to uh, you know produce income and if you're non accredited here's a strategy to get you to become accredited so he really liked uh, me and the program um, and it's, you know it's a funny story the way I met him was he bought a piece of property for me forty acres and then he got my uh, marketing material. He's like, wait, you actually teach how to do this too? And then we had a conversation about it. So he's an interesting guy. Uh, Shift Evolution is his company. What are you, are, are, are you looking it up? No, yeah, I am. I'm just trying to peek, peek for it. But you know, it's, his name sounds really familiar. So I'm trying to figure out um, if we had, if he'd ever, did he, where, where did he buy from you? He bought uh, Nevada. Okay. Um, interesting. Yeah. It just name sounds super familiar. He probably um, bought from you too. I don't, yeah, I don't know. Well, how do you spell his last name? H A A R M A N. Maybe not. Maybe not. Anyway, um, it's a pretty. It, it's not a. It's, it's like you know, Harmon's a pretty common name too. So yeah, or, or I've heard it quite a few times. Yeah, so. but but I tell you what, this you know, it was pretty cool. Like he's 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 a big hitter. That's awesome. Yeah. So I went to his house. You know, one of his houses. It's on the lake in Austin. You know, this affluent gated community. You know, he's got the Bentley and I mean, it was like, it was like sitting out of the movies. You know what I mean? I'm like, whoa. That's awesome. That is so, so cool. Um, wow. he's, he must be doing something right. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, and you know, you, you, when we talk about this and we talk about how I drive a, uh, an 86 Subaru. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. 
Um, anyway, so that's cool, Mark. What about your trip to, where'd you go, Pennsylvania? Yeah, so the, yeah, so the Tax and Investing Conference was in McCungy, Pennsylvania. And and so Joanne Musa, the tax lien lady, is like, you know, fly into Allentown. Well, I couldn't get a good a good flight into Allentown, so I flew into Philly, and it's freezing there. So uh, I get there, I drive like two hours to Allentown, and then from Allentown, it's about a 20-minute drive into McCungy, which is where the uh, conference was. It's like on a ski resort. And people are skiing. It's beautiful. But um, it was a really good turnout. Like, I think there are 40, 50 people there. Uh, I met Rick Dawson, the Hooked on Overages guy. He was there. Uh, there was Lean Source was there. So for, you know, tax lien investors, there's all these people that had software tools to help them do due diligence. There was uh, a tax lien investor, like a private equity guy. I think he had about $50 million fund. And, you know, he'd help you invest in liens, but um, very competitive. Like New Jersey, uh, you know, liens are very, very competitive is what I learned. Very, very tough way now to, to get that yield um, because these private equity groups are coming in and investing in the tax liens. But, you know, from, from a networking perspective and meeting people and, and getting to, to talk on stage and be a speaker, it was really cool. I really enjoyed it. Um, and how, and how I, would, would I go again in January? No. How many, people, how many people did you speak in front of? Uh, I think 40. Let's and say just, 40. What, hour long, 30 minutes? Hour, 15 minutes. Wow, Mark. Yeah. So, you know, my, my presentation was probably an hour, and then we did uh, a 15-minute Q&A. That's really cool. Did you use a PowerPoint to talk about things? Yeah, I've got a keynote. So I used the keynote, just hooked it up to my laptop, and it was really neat. That's really cool, buddy. Yeah, I, okay. I, I enjoyed it. I, I, I'm hoping to do more of that. But That's you, know, you have some, you have some coming up in about two months, dude. Well, we're, the, the the seminar is really going to be focused on the investors toolkit. We're going to just take people through everything. Got it. So um, that's that's really going to be an intensive day of you know here's the toolkit again. Here's how you do due diligence. Here's how how I do it. Here's how Duran does it. You know, here's the letter writing campaign. This is how we do it. This is what we're doing today. Um, this is how we scrub our list. Uh, and so it's going to be a very, very intensive day. And then we'll do, uh, well, you know, we'll do some, have some breaks and we'll do some mind uh, mindset stuff, some goal setting stuff. So it's going to be fun. That's awesome. I'm, yeah. uh, I'm excited. Should be fun. And uh, I'll probably be staying at the uh, Excalibur. <laughs> <laughs> Not, not there, Circus Circus? No, either there or Circus Circus. But you, you're going to bring the kids and the wife and, and make I'm, a vacation of it? I'm not going to lie. I, I, I'm kind of a kid, and I'll sit there at those games for hours because when I get done, I have no prize in my hand, yet I still feel like a champion. So, And it, I knew that I didn't play any slot machines or poker, so it's just good knowing that I What, Duran, I lost you. Know, you know, play the other games and lost. I'm here. Oh, yeah, you froze there for a second. All right, are you back? I'm back. Okay, good, good. So yeah, I mean, it's it's gonna be intensive two days. I can yep. tell you that. Okay. Um, and if if you've uh, already invested in the investors toolkit, then uh, you know you get two free tickets anyways. So uh, I'm hoping for a good crowd. That's awesome. Yeah. The the goal is you know at least a hundred people. Yeah. At least. So um, it'll be fun. Uh, all right. What else is going on with you? Well, how about how about deals? What deals are you doing? Uh, just closed a small little deal in um, Elko County. Okay, nice. It was a three and a half acre. Um, I paid about twenty two hundred bucks for it. Right. Uh, and I sold it for about fifteen thousand. That's pretty good on terms. That's and, pretty good. Uh, so what'd you, what'd you get? Time, what'd you get down on that? You know, I only. You know, it's funny. I, that one of the things that I think are is really important for people to to note is that for whatever reason, there's just been a fluctuation. I think a lot of people just don't have much to put down on properties right. and they're attracted. They're attracted by a small down payment. So I've been just playing with numbers anywhere from 50 bucks to 200 bucks um, just to get them in. You know, it's kind of like your, you know, it, it, it's kind of like your hook for them to kind of go, Oh, you know, this is cool. 50 bucks, you know what, what, you know, and it's only 150 bucks a month. You know, it's, right. so that's, I've just been playing marketing wise with numbers and, and, uh, that 50 bucks seems to be a little bit of a hook for me in terms of getting them in and uh, at least sparking the conversation. I've been having a lot more conversations with people, talking to people, 
just really doing a good job of follow up with with different people and and that's the interesting part you find you know you find out it's you know just like the car industry you, you know people you know a car a car salesman is going to you know talk to you and the guy that generally sells the car is the guy that if you walk off the lot that you call back three times and really were genuine about wanting to help him find a car. Right. And, um, and, and same way with land is like, if you call the guy back two or three times, say, Hey, look, you know, what are you looking for? How can I help you? I want to earn your business. Um, you know, because we have plenty of property and if we don't, we can find it. So it's just, uh, it's, it's just a matter of just really going back and focusing on that, on that follow up. Yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, and it's a challenge. You know, Mark, we talked about it. It's a challenge for me. Um, focus. Well, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about focus. So Duran's got a focus issue. I mean, you, you've got too many things going on. You've got the mining project, right? Yeah. yeah. You've got Land Hub, and that's and that's it right now. That's all I want. And no, but they, they, you still got you still have uh, reserve land. Yeah, but and here's what's here's what's great about that is you and I are. And, both... and what about your VCs? Like you're on board of companies. Like doesn't that take time? A little Consulting? bit. Very, very little bit. Very little bit. Okay. Um, I mean, that's that's like a that's quarterly. So I'll spend a couple hours a quarter with different companies, but, but that doesn't take a ton of time. But I think here, here's the, the dilemma of being sort of a, a serial entrepreneur is that, um, and not focusing like, look, if I focused on land, I would be making a lot more money. Um, but I, I've sort of, dis, I've sort of taken what I've done and evolved it into a mining project, which again, in six months from now, we could have a be we could have an entirely different conversation. Um, is it going to be, is it going to be six months or sooner? It could be sooner. It could be six months. It could be two years. I don't know. Oh my gosh! I'm so glad I didn't invest in this thing. <laughs> I can't. I can't handle the stress of it. So anyway, and it is like it is very stressful because for me, I have you know I I have invested quite a bit of capital in the project. Um, there is a lot of risk involved, um, but at, at this point in time, we've done a lot of you know mitigating the risk and you know sp spent a lot of time focusing on how we can package this thing up and move it. And we still have some things to kind of figure out corporate structure, everything else that we're, we're kind of just cleaning up. But again, it's, it's, that's the dilemma of being an entrepreneur and taking these big leaps of faith and, uh, and trying to, you know, sort of take, take those big risks. So, but at the same time, as you do that, you step back or, or you, you step into this world of, of unorganization, right? Because it takes time away from your schedule of focusing on land or land right. hub. So right. I am, I am really focused and I have, and just so you know, I actually am very focused on Land Hub. I have a team now of four employees that are actually working on this full time. So, um, you know, I have these designers in place. I have developers that are working on it. And, you know, so I have a team of people and now it's just a matter, but, but again, like any other yeah, business. Yeah, but are you focused mentally? Like, I can't imagine what you think about in the shower and all the things that are going through that head. When I, when I go to the shower, dude, that's my downtime, buddy. That's when I actually don't think. Oh, that's great. So I do get about five minutes a day of not thinking about anything. Um, but no, I, I, I do, I, it's, it's hard. It's hard to say. It's hard to say that I, that I'm obviously a hundred percent focused on land hub because yes, you're right. I'm not, but here's what would folk, here's what would help me focus is as we discussed, Mark and I discussed, I'm out raising capital for land hub because it's a bigger project and I need to raise some capital to build this software out. So I'm out sort of, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not actively seeking investment. I've got a couple of potential verbal commitments right. uh, that I that I need to go after, and I've got a couple appointments coming up that should help me solve that that portion of the equation. And at that point, once you have the money, once you have the capital to sort of build the software, then you start moving forward and focusing on on one thing because you have the money to do it. At this at the moment, I'm it's all bootstrapped. I'm and and the term bootstrapped is basically an entrepreneurial term um, that that you're, you're spending your own money to get this thing off the ground. And yeah. I, I've already spent probably, you know, 30, 40,000 of my own capital in employees and design. And so I've got a lot of money invested in land hub as well, both land hub and Corral Canyon resources, my two projects that are, that are investment projects of mine, but also my companies um, take, they do take a lot of focus away from other stuff, but there are also things that I believe are, potential exits, right? So as you right. start talking about exit strategies, things that I could look down the pipeline in two and a half years and go, hey, we've built the software, you know, it's it's making X and I want to sell it for 5X. Yeah, so, no, no, I know. These these are what I call get out of the ghetto ideas. Yeah. Even though you live in the best place in the world. I live um, in Com I live in Compton, but I yeah. have a too. Yeah, yeah. So you just, I guess you just build a bigger house next to the house you have off the beach. So, <laughs> 
I mean, but that's the thing is like, so you're making these big bets and, you know, if they hit, it's great. But, you know, day in and day out, once you've made those bets, right? Yeah. You got to focus on, on really something that's, uh, going to be able to grow and build and, and do what you know best, which is buying and selling raw land. So that's my, that's my issue with you is that if I, I feel like you're taking your eye off the ball that, you know is going to bring you steady income. You know is going to bring you steady passive income. Yet you're you're like chasing the big, big. And I know I can't say the number. Can I say seven figures? Yes, dude. It could. It's actually eight figures. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you're you're chasing bigger, bigger paydays down the down the road. And there's nothing wrong with that, as long as you don't take your eye off the ball that is going to pay the bills and, today and, and secure your future uh, in case these things don't hit because. Look, the bigger the bigger the risk, uh, the bigger the risk. Like right? you yeah. have, so that that's my the bigger issue. Risk, the higher chance of failing. The higher the chance of failing. So if it does fail, God forbid. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and you know uh, I. Should, I you, you should, but you should, you know, I want you to have the, in the pipeline deal flow coming in and yeah. and selling every every day. Yeah. No, I, you're you are you are spot on, and I am and I am honestly like at a point now where and my dilemma. See, Mark, if you and I had a had a, and you have your, your, um, what are those? What do you call your, your assistants, your virtual assistants? My virtual assistants, right. You, right. you have that, that system dialed. I had, I have, I had some virtual assistants that worked well for me. And then we talked about it. A couple of them did a couple of stupid things that, that, and made some errors with me. I know. And I, know. And I had to make some, some changes. And then I had a real assistant. Um, you know, I'm not going to name any names. Um, but it just kind of, kind of dropped the ball on me, wasn't focused. And so it's just, that dilemma now of you're right. I have to go back, and I am. I'm you know actually, what you need to do. You got to fly me out there for the weekend, and yeah. I'm and I'll sit in your office, and we're going to go through what I call the eliminate, delegate, systematize program, and we're and I'm going to just free you up for hours and hours. Like this, you don't need to do. This, you don't need to do. Why are you doing this? You don't need okay. to do that. And I'm going to fly there. You're going to fly me there, and we're going to talk about taking big risks. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Being friends with you is a big risk. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big risk. I sometimes I get angry. I'll cuss you out, and then I, we don't talk for two years. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, for the listeners, I don't know if you guys know Mark. Mark and I, he's we have don't don't talk about the joke machine. No, no, we're not. Well, we can't. Well, that's a good. I don't want to talk about the joke that's, machine. That's a good intro. So, uh, Mark and I obviously have done business together for many years. Uh, and Mark, Mark bought me a very special gift many years ago, and I always kind of gave him crap for it because just because. The, the joke machine ended up being a five hundred thousand dollar prize for Mark, um, and, and <laughs> for a deal that we put together. But but it was funny because I, Mark bought me a probably one of the coolest gifts I've ever been been. Actually, a couple of really cool gifts. One's right here on my desk, and um, and so it was really cool because and I kind of feel bad, Mark. I was I pro I was thinking about what I'm feeling I, bad because like I could have been happy to do it. What whatever I really appreciate it. You know what? Honestly, you know that's the great thing about giving though and giving back. Cause you're the one who feels better, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's, it's, you it's gave great. me, you get, you're actually, your gift gave me a good idea, which actually ticks me off because I don't like having any more ideas in this brain. <laughs> oh no. If I could just crush it, scrunch it down. So anyways, is this going to be your tip of the week? Sure. All right. Let's, let's hear it. Okay. Cause um, we're, we're getting down to that time now. Okay. Well, why, why don't you go with yours first so I can actually find my, uh, my tip of the week. All right. So I'm, I'm going to tell you a story. I'm at dinner with like nine people from the conference. We're all talking. And uh, I hear this story from uh, this guy, Ed, right? And he's, t I don't know if you've ever heard of Dan Kennedy. He's like the, the founder of, uh, you know, in the information marketing business, basically. And he's got books and he's, he's a big, big deal. Uh, this Dan Kennedy guy. So, um, so when Dan Kennedy first gets started, he's at a trade show. And this guy walks up to him and he's got like, you know, 15 books and products and information products that he's selling on marketing and copywriting, right? He's a, he's a marketing copywriting guy. Yeah. So the guy walks up. He's like, I'll take all of them. And Dan's like, what do you mean? He's like, I'll take everything you've got in your booth. Uh, I'll be back in 20 minutes. Just, you know, box it all up for me. I'll, you know, do you take American Express? So Dan doesn't believe him. <laughs> Boy, so he doesn't, he doesn't do, put anything away. And uh, the guy comes back and he's like, okay, where's, where's all my stuff? He's like, uh, I thought you were kidding. So the guy's like, look, you're obviously young, you're naive, you're new to the business. 
I'm going to give you a little piece of advice. You had a sale, okay? When you have a sale, take the sale. He's like, so I'm going to give you a second chance now. Box everything up right now. He spent $15,000. What? Puts it on his Amex. Takes it home. And Dan can't believe this. So the guy next to him is like, do you know who that guy is? And he's like, no, I have no idea. It turns out he's like a, like the wealthiest guy in town, like a multimillionaire. But the interesting thing about this guy is his claim to fame was that he had the biggest library in town. This guy just liked to, to you know, read as much as he could read and get as much information as he could. And the moral of the story being that typically and statistically speaking, the wealthiest people in the country are the ones who are the most well-read and, you know, are always getting an influx of new ideas. Yeah. And so, uh, so all, based on that, I always want to read more, learn more. Like, I love that stuff, right? I mean, I know yeah. you, like, I love to learn, but it's just time is an issue. So I found a new app on the iPhone. I think it's for Android too. And it's called Blinkist, B-L-I-N-K-I-S-T. And it's also online as well. And uh, here, I'm going to get my phone real fast and go over the books. I read nine books on the airplane. Hold on. Did you really read nine books? Yeah. Dr. Seuss? No. So what this does is it's, it's cliff notes. It's cliff notes for books. So this is what I read. Um, I'm going to the app now. Here it is. And it's, it's free for, uh, I think, three or five days. You can read as many as you want, and then it's a subscription. It's like, it's like cheap. I think it's like 39 bucks or something for the year. So I read Mindset. I read Savor, Delivering Happiness, Built to Last, To Sell is Human, Great by Choice, The Presentation Secrets of Steve Jobs, Rework, The Power of Habit, Drive, So Good They Can't Ignore You, which I've already read, by the way, and Getting Things Done, which I've also read. So these are, this takes 15 minutes, and it, you know how like every business book can always be kind of, you know, Glean down to like, you know, the first 50 pages are really what's important, and yeah. the rest are just examples. That's what this does, and it's fantastic. So, uh, Blinkist is my tip of the week for those people that are like me. You don't have time to read uh, as much as you'd like. You can get really the essence of any book. And really, what's interesting about this is like, you can go through these books, get the essence of it, and if you really like that and want more information, you just go online and buy the book. So, you kind of, you know, and Amazon has something similar, but this is a little bit more detailed. I what do you I, what, you well, like it? I love that because I hate reading. Yeah, and, Blinkist. And I, when I say I hate reading, I hate reading something that's more than 25 or 30 pages. Right. Um, so that to me, but although I love learning. So if it's something intriguing, I'm definitely, uh, I'm definitely interested in learning. Um, my tip of the week is absolutely, totally opposite yours. My tip of the week. Um, it comes back. So, so I didn't get to finish my story about what Mark bought me um, f uh, for my gift. Mark, Mark bought me a drone with the camera. And this thing is so cool. I took it in the neighborhood my, in my cul-de-sac and I lifted it, launched this thing up. I tell you, I was the po most popular guy uh, probably in my entire complex. Just people, all the neighbors coming up going, hey, what, what is that? I'm like, it's a drone. Are you stupid? Come on. <laughs> but, uh, you know, how did you not know that? And But this thing, this, so <clears throat> my home is probably, about, I'm living about a mile from the beach. And if you go up about 100 feet, you can get a 180 degree ocean view. So that's how, that's how far I am away. Hey, no, not 100, maybe 60 or 50 feet. Right. I get up, I get 180 degree. So I put the drone up uh, about a 60, about 60, 70 feet. And I, and I spun the drone around and I have, it takes HD video. So I have this video of an entire ocean view. It can see the freeway, the traffic. It's the coolest thing ever. That's so, cool. You got to send me that video. I will. It's just, and you can, you control this thing with your iPad. So I have my iPad out and that's what controls the drone. So I'm still learning the, the control aspect of the drone, but that kind of led me into like, well, interesting. What about utilizing a drone with a camera for real estate? That's why I got it for you. Oh, I didn't know that. Of course. So, so, um, so now I thought, well, gosh, if there's, there's a, there's a step above, there's a, there's a, there's another one I'm going to buy because Mark, because Mark got me this. He just got me so excited. It's called the Phantom 2 Vision. Okay. The Phantom 2 Vision. Okay. So it's DJI.com. 
And uh, don't ask me what DJI stands for because I don't know. I'm going to check it out. But basically, it's – and then look at the Phantom 2 Vision. And the camera is – it's a it's a Go – it's like their own t- GoPro high-def camera. Oh, my God. This looks good. Okay. Are but, you kidding me? But this thing's only 1100 bucks, Mark. I thought, gosh, you know, it's not that bad for something that could totally improve the value of your – of your land if you're out there if you're out taking pictures so um, this is fantastic i have to have this today so i'm i'm uh i'm now, I'm now gonna let mark buy it for me uh, I'm, I'm gonna get this for both of us are you kidding me how cool is that this is so cool so uh but, but how does, is this different than the pair does it just go higher it, well no it's got the, the camera's a lot different and it's this actually has its own remote control so so one person would generally control the drone and another person would generally control the actual camera, if that makes sense. Oh, I see. Okay, In- integrated high-end camera, 14 megapixels, record video. Yeah, see, this is this is a fantastic way to get uh, pictures of, of land and property and developments. Yeah. Because, you know, in the old days, what you'd have to do is you'd, you'd, you'd fly over, mm-hmm. which is really expensive. Yeah. Do, you know, to do these flyovers. And um, and then, you, you know, you're, you're personally looking at it, doing your due diligence. You're not even, not even getting video. From a marketing aspect, yeah. I mean, so this is tr- you know tremendous. Yeah, and and the, the only negative with these are your 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 range is pretty like it's not that bad. So you have a range of about I think mine now has a range of about a hundred meters, which right? Three hundred, which is around three hundred feet plus or minus, uh, maybe three hundred. I don't know. I think uh, maybe three twenty or whatever it is. Um, these have these have a range of three hundred meters, so basically almost a thousand feet. Um, so you can get you know, whatever, you know, 500 feet high with your drone and still be in complete control. Um, so it's really interesting how it works. And the, and the Wi-Fi works from your phone or your iPad. And in this case, um, you, so you, what you do, I think from what I'm looking at here, the phone sits on the controller and then, and then that is the camera. And then you actually have a remote control that you would fly the drone with. Wow. So pretty neat. That's really cool. That's really so, cool. So just a kind of a you know cool sales sales uh, toy for uh, you know for, you know and it's funny because it's not that expensive. I mean eleven hundred bucks to go to have something that you know one of them could sell your property. You know you know taking. Oh one. yeah, I mean it'll pay for itself in one at least one sale. Exactly. So uh, you know so yeah so all right well great that's a great tip. Yeah. Uh, DJI dot com. Yeah. Uh, are we good? Back, backslash Duran. So back, I can- <laughs> backslash Duran. So, Duran, are you going to be able to do this in the next week? Of course, dude. All right, you're of you're course. always up to something. Well, we're getting you know what's what's terrible is we're getting no feedback from anybody. I mean, come on, I'm, I'm getting feedback. You know what? People need to leave, look. Do us a favor. Leave us some comments on iTunes if you like the podcast. Um, if you don't like the podcast, just email us why you don't like it. Uh, you don't have to publicly tell us. We'll just we'll we'll adjust. And uh, you know, leave us some feedback. Give us some comments. Let us know what you want to hear about. Um, in particular, and yeah. uh, for those of you in the Gold Mastermind, uh, please join the private Facebook group that I've emailed you about. We're getting a lot of questions. We're getting a lot of chatter on that uh, for those Gold Mastermind members. I think it's a really great value add uh, in addition to the actual Mastermind sessions that you're listening to. Anyways, uh, listen, give Duran some love. Go to reserveland.com. Buy some wholesale land. If Duran doesn't have anything you want, give me some love. Frontier Properties, USA.com. Make some investments. And uh, listen, if you want to learn more about buying and selling raw land, go to thelandgeek.com. Download for free the Passive Income Blueprint. Get the ebook, How to Avoid the Three Fatal Land Buying Mistakes, and get to listen to us every week delivered to your inbox, the Land Geek Podcast. So, Duran Frazier, thank you so much, my friend. It's always a pleasure. This is Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek. Uh, make it an extraordinary week and uh, a profitable one. We'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.